Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming. I know this is the last session, so I'm sure you guys are excited to play some board games later. Uh, my name is Ashley, and I'll be talking about DNS. Um, so if you read the description in, in, my, uh, in the session talk, you'll see that it said um, DNS. And for some people who are new to development, you might be wondering, what is DNS? And what does it have to do with Django? Uh, that's a great question. So DNS is essentially how IP addresses are associated with domain names. And technically, you could be a Django developer and know nothing about DNS. Uh, but the nice thing is that it helps with debugging. So say you're for some reason, your website crashes, and you don't know what's going on, um, it might be a DNS issue, not necessarily a server issue. Um, it's also good if you're a freelancer or a consultant. You may be asked to launch a client's website, and so it's helpful for you to know how to do that and uh, talk through those steps in the process. And then you might be wondering, why am I speaking about this topic? What do I know about DNS? Um, so for the past six years, I've been helping launch websites. Uh, I was a software tester for several years at a self-storage company, and uh, the developers were like, oh, DNS, this is so boring. We'll teach the QA girl how to do this. So that's where I got my start, and I got really good at it, and then I moved on to other projects and taught our account managers how to do DNS. And then at my current company, I work at a very small startup, so it just becomes part of my job to launch all of our websites. So I would say between those two jobs, I've launched about 500 different websites. Um, and I ran into every single issue, probably, that you could encounter, from uh, taking down websites to breaking emails. Um, there's all sorts of tricks and things that might come up when you're launching a website. So what we'll do at this talk is that we'll actually pretend like we're launching a website and go through all the steps, what we need in order to launch our new website. Um, so just a quick review, most of you probably know um, a very basic definition of the internet is basically computers that talk to each other. Um, and DNS is the way that they communicate. It's their common language. It's short for domain name systems, and it connects IP addresses to domains, as I mentioned earlier. Um, I like to give this example to the account managers that I teach about DNS, that essentially um, a, a domain is like a name in your phone's address book. So we know that this is my friend's name. This was my friend Amy's phone number when she lived in Amsterdam. And so the equivalent to this for uh, DNS is the domain name, so um, like google.com. So Amy's phone number is in our address book, but I don't know it. It doesn't really matter. I can change it to whatever I want, but I'll still know if I want to contact Amy uh, to just select her number in my address book. And that is the equivalent to our IP address. I mean, technically, we could go to an IP address and view the website, but who wants to remember a bunch of random uh, numbers when we can just go to google.com? Um, and something also in our address book, sometimes our phone numbers come from Google or they come from Facebook. And uh, DNS has a similar uh, functionality. Our uh, numbers can come from a place called name servers. And we'll talk more about those different places that our DNS can come from. So how does it all work? Um, what are the techni ne technical details of DNS? So here's a picture that I found online. But essentially, what happens when you type in google.com is that you can, your computer will connect with the uh, top-level domain DNS information. And what a top-level domain is, that's just whatever is after the dot. So with Google.com, that would be the com. And so com has a system of computers, and it says, hey, you can find Google's records at the Google name servers. Um, and then once you go to the Google's name servers, it will have an A record that will have the, the IP address that we are trying to hit. And that will go back to your, um, your computer, and that will all happen in a matter of milliseconds. So if you're going to launch your client's website, the first thing that you'll need is you're going to have to be able to find your, um, your name servers. And most clients are going to have no idea what a domain, or they know what their domain is, but they don't know where their name servers are located or where any of this information might be. But luckily, we can help them out. There's a website called who.is. And if you go to this website, 
you can type in the domain name. So like for, in, in our example, this is a screenshot of the who is information. Um, you can type in mydomain.com and it will show you where the registrar is. And the registrar is just where your domain is, um, is registered. So if you go to GoDaddy and you register your domain, then that is your registrar. And in this case, our registrar, you can see the referral URL is domain.com. Uh, if you scroll down on this page, you'll also see information on name servers. Uh, our name servers are where our actual DNS uh, information lives. And a lot of the time, this information will be in the same place as your registrar, um, but sometimes it's not. Uh, in this example, it happens to be in the same area, mydomain.com. Um, but you know, for, for other websites, they may be hosting them at like Amazon, Route 53, or various uh, other places that you can have name servers. And like, if you're using GoDaddy, their name servers are at secureserver.net. Uh, I just know that from launching a lot of websites, but you can easily look that information up online and look at their FAQ documentation. So we have the name servers, we have our registrar. Um, we're, we're ready to launch, right? Like, we're good to go. Okay, hold up. There's a couple of precautions that we need to take prior to launching our website. Um, I've kind of created this pre-launch checklist that I, things that I recommend you doing prior to launching a website. Um, the first thing that I, I highly, highly re re recommend that you do is to take a screenshot of the current DNS. And you'll see later why this is really important, um, but it's always good to have a history of that information that you can go back in case anything goes wrong. Um, I've had, you know, I've launched some sites and then the account manager will come back a couple minutes later and be like, actually, the client didn't want to launch that website yet. Just kidding, go back to the old DNS information. So you just never know. Um, the other thing that I recommend is doing a final smoke test of your production server. Um, this can be in a variety of ways. You could just hit like the IP address before you launch, or you can also create a production environment that is um, like password protected, because you don't want to run into any issues with um, SEO issues with duplicate content. So we want this to be guarded away from Google and just specifically for development usage only. Um, and then also, as I said before, make sure you have access to the correct records. Oftentimes, I will get DNS information, and then it turns out the name servers are somewhere else, and it gets kind of frustrating because everyone's really excited to launch a website, and we just don't have the correct information. So make sure that you've done, done your dig, done your who is, and you've found that information. Um, so this is an example of what DNS records look like if you've never seen DNS records before. Uh, this is how we would launch a website. We, this is a, a very typical configuration. Obviously, some, many servers have different configurations, but this is our, our standard for all the sites that I've launched through the years. Um, there's typically an A record, and this is the record that says, hey, this is the server that you go to when you go to this website. And then there's also a C name record. And a C name record is just a subdomain record. And you can have a dub 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 record, or you can have an asterisk. And the asterisk just means catch all. And what, how that works is if you go to anything that's not specifically defined by your DNS records, um, it will automatically reach or redirect you to wherever the catch all is pointing to. So in this case, the catch all is pointing to the A record, the two pixels right.com. And so anything that is not specifically defined by our DNS records will take us straight to the IP address. All right, so we've launched our website. Exciting times, <laughs> but wait, I don't know if anyone's ever heard this before, but I can't see the new website. Where is it? What's going on? Okay, it's going to be okay. Let's take a deep breath, and we will troubleshoot what's happening here. So where is my new website? So let's talk a little bit about the different types of DNS servers. There's the authoritative DNS server. This is the server where DNS information is stored. So this is where we're changing the DNS information. This is where we were when we launched our website. And then there's recursive DNS information. And this is the DNS servers that look up information on an authoritative server. And depending on how you're looking at your website, there could be several layers of recursive DNS servers. You have your, your browser, you have your internet service provider, 
and then if there are firewalls and anything like that, there can be several other recursive DNS servers that you have to go through in order to um, see your website. And authoritative servers tell the recursive DNS servers to look for new information every num number of seconds. And this number of seconds is called the time to live, or TTL for short. So when you go in and you look at your DNS records, you will see a, num a, a number of seconds called the TTL. And the longer the TTL, the longer it will take for the recursive DNS to check for the authoritative DNS server changes. So essentially, a TTL is, is saying, like, every number of seconds, check for, for changes to this information. Um, best practice, in an ideal world, you would set the TTL to the smallest number of seconds allowed by the name server, 24 to 48 hours to launch. Um, sometimes this happens, oftentimes, you know, I'm told we got to launch the site now, we don't really have time to set the TTL, and then that's when you'll run into issues like propagation issues, um, where, where some people will see the website or they'll still con con continue to see the old website. Um, you don't want to, if you change the TTL, you don't want to keep this number low because you don't want the DNS servers to keep looking for this information every second or so. That's just not very efficient. Um, and then also, just remember uh, DNS caching. Um, so even though you may be able to see a website on your computer, um, you know, perhaps the director of sales just still won't be able to see it. So we typically tell our clients, give about two to 24 hours to see the website. And if you're still having issues, um, best, my best practice is when, whenever I'm not sure, like, is this a DNS issue or is this a, um, a caching issue, I'll look at a site on my mobile device. So if you turn off Wi-Fi on your mobile device, um, it will directly connect you to the authoritative servers. And so the changes to your DNS should all, like, appear pretty much instantaneously. <laughs> um, so if you look at it on your, on your mobile device and you're still seeing an old website, or it's just not redirecting. Um, there are a couple other things that you can do in order to troubleshoot these issues. Um, always check the root A record. This is the record that tells our um, tells the name servers this is where our server is at. So make sure there are no misspellings or anything weird in there. Um, also check that you have a dub 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 or catch all record. Um, Sometimes people will launch websites and they'll forget to put this in. So if you go to www.mydomain.com, um, they're not going to see anything. It's going to say that it doesn't exist because the DNS, uh, the name servers don't know what to do when you go to www.mydomain.com. Um, also, like I said before, verify your name servers. We have who.is that has good data. And then you can also go onto your command line and uh, run a command called dig. So you can do dig mydomain.com and then any, or actually a lot of people have stopped using any because that's hard on their server. So you can do dig mydomain.com and then just ns. And that will show you the name servers that your um, computer are, is currently seeing. Um, and then step four is you will check for, to see if the domain is being redirected outside of DNS. So I always use GoDaddy as an example, not because I work for GoDaddy or anything, but that's how I often launch websites. A lot of people register their websites at GoDaddy.com. But you can scroll past the DNS information, and you'll see where uh, there's a redirect link. And sometimes like the domain will be redirecting to another domain, and you'll need to remove that in order to um, actually be able to use the DNS information correctly. Um, if there's an issue where the website looks fine on your computer, but on mobile, uh, you can, but you can't really see anything on mobile, you're still seeing the old website, uh, you can check for an M or a mobile record. Um, sometimes different vendors will use M records to show a mobile version of their website. And if you don't have that kind of DNS or server configuration, um, it's just not necessary. So if you have a catch-all, uh, CNAME record, you can just remove those, and then anytime someone goes to m.mydomain.com, it will redirect them to the, uh, the domain, because that's how it's set up. Or if you are using the dub 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 for whatever reason, maybe your DNS provider doesn't allow you to put catch-alls, 
um, you'll have to set a, an M or a mobile record that's pointing to your domain so that it will know to go to that IP address. And this is just an example of a dig that you can do on the command line. And then I also found a tool on over the weekend that you can go to Google, and Google has a, a, a toolbox that you can use to also do digs through the UI if you're not comfortable with a uh, command prompt. But, but this will show you, this is where my company's uh, DNS information is located. It's in Amazon Web Services. So say I wanted to launch uh, a new version of their website, I would have to have access to Route 53, which is uh, Amazon Web Services um, DNS provider, or I would have to at least get a screenshot of that data to make sure that I'm not um, that I'm not missing any information. Technically, you can launch a website without getting the uh, the uh, name server information. You can just dig for it all, but there's a chance that you could potentially break their email because you don't have all the MX records or all the C name records. It's not a perfect science, so make sure you get a copy of those name server records from their previous provider. Um, so the site's live, everything's looking good, but the client called and their email's not working. Uh-oh. All right, well, we can figure this out. What's going on here? Um, so anytime you're troubleshooting email uh, issues, the first, this is where our screenshot's gonna come in really handy. Um, we can go back to the old records that they were using and make sure that we uh, copied all of the MX records, make sure they are correct. Um, if you're not familiar with MX records, those are just the records that whenever an email comes in, um, that's what server to go to in order to uh, send that mail in to the website. So an MX record typically has a number and a URL. Uh, the number is the priority of which server, which email server the mail should be delivered to. And then the URL is where mail servers are located. So for like Google Apps for Business, they typically have five MX records. And if one is not working for whatever reason, uh, it'll always hit the one that's going to priority zero first. If that's not working for whatever reason, then it will go to the next one that's highest in priority or the lowest number. Um, if you are see, are, you're looking at the MX records, you realize, oh, it's going to zero at mydomain.com, and you change the IP address. So that means that their email, unless you're hosting their email, their email server is not there anymore. So what do you do? Um, in this case, you would create a CNAME record called mail pointing to the old IP address. And what this does is it just says, hey, like the email, it lives on this old IP address. And then step two, you'll need to change the MX record from zero mydomain.com to zero mail mydomain.com. And then when the email comes through, it will see the MX record and it will see that the server is located at mail at mydomain.com and uh, the mail will hopefully start working accordingly. All right, you did it. Your site is live. It's very exciting. The cats are very happy for you. <laughs> All right, so that's a lot to go through in 20 minutes. And if you're still curious on how DNS works, um, there are a lot of additional resources that you can take a look at online. And then I also have a link to the Google Apps dig command that you can use online. And my presentation can be found at this URL. And that's all I have for tonight, so thank you.